Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this week's Writer's Chat. And this is the place where we like to gather together. We talk about all things writer, writing, about writing for writers and by writers. And we're really glad you're here with us today. We've got a lot of the regular crew in the chat room I'm seeing hopping on. And if you watch us by the replay, we're so glad that you take the time out of your day to learn something new about writing and to uh, feed yourself as a writer, to continue to grow. So that's one thing we really try to focus on here, bringing some current topics and stuff. My name is Jean Wise. I'm one of the co-hosts here. I'm a Christian nonfiction writer, and I'm joined today by my other co-host, Bethany Jett, and uh, she writes all sorts of things. This is a lady that's a wonderful source of info. And I'm going to turn it over to Bethany to introduce our special guest and our topic today. So take it away, Bethany. Hey, everybody. We're so glad you're here. I am thrilled to have Cody Moorhead here with us today. Um, Cody's a good friend, and he's also brilliant at graphic design. So I'm excited to hear his thoughts on book covers and then also um, how to create images that can promote your books beyond the book cover. So we're going to kind of like, you know, veer off the path a little bit towards the end, but Cody's a youth, uh, youth minister. Um, mm -hmm. Heart of the Lakes Church in Michigan. Is that right? Did I get it? <laughs> yeah. And he's also the creative director for Serious Writer, and he is the owner of PubZoo Creative, and they um, specialize in websites and logos and graphics for authors and writers. And he's been teaching at writers' conferences this year all over the country, um, really, and he's a breath of fresh air. So you guys are just going to love today. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> Welcome, Cody. <laughs> well, thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. So, well, uh, so I today we're talking about book covers and just graphic design in general. Uh, um, as you know, as a lot of authors are realizing now how important that is in their platform building and their branding and um, pretty much all around. And um, one of the things that I've noticed lately from writers that I meet with is that they are reluctant to do graphic design, but they're also realizing that like they can't just write anymore. <laughs> they have to have multiple skills. And uh, so I, I, I am excited to talk about some things today. So yeah, it'll be good. All right. So Cody and I sort of went over like what we were gonna cover. Today, I think we're going to start with book covers because self-publishing is a path that a lot of authors take, even who are traditionally published. Sometimes there's projects that need to go where you control the whole thing, which means you're no longer, <laughs> you know, up to the mercy of your publisher anymore on the book cover. You don't really have a lot of control there. So let's chat real quick, Cody, about um, if you're going to self-publish a book, what are the things you need to know? Is this something that authors should take on themselves if they don't really have an eye for graphic design? Or what is your recommendation after the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of book covers that you've done and looked at? Okay, so I will, let me say this, first of all. As a graphic designer and somebody who does book covers, if I were to write a book and I were to have it, if I were to self-publish and I needed to design a book cover, I would not design my own book cover. Like, and I know that that sounds crazy to people, but here's the deal. There's two reasons for that. I am in the less than 1% of author, writer, people that has the ability to graphically design and put something out on the market. A lot of people believe that they do, but they just don't. And they don't have an eye for what's current in the market. And over and over and over again, we see poorly designed book covers mm -hmm. that get dusty on shelves. And so um, one, one thing that I think is, is that people don't have an eye for it. And because they're so, so invested in their own project, they don't always understand that. Uh, but I, I would not design my own book cover. And the second reason is because you're too close to it. Yeah. Good design comes from a place of differing perspective. And so to be able to take a step back and be able to read something or a manuscript or an idea and take another hack at it is typically the way to get the best, uh, the best non uh, tethered eye at what you're doing and how you're designing. So that's so cool. 
But I was just going to say in one question, uh, you know, how did, how can we help develop a better eye for good book covers? Do you have any suggestions on that? Well, okay. So one thing is so there are some things that are just natural that people are just naturally good at. Okay. And then there are learned things, right? And in, in graphic design, whether we want to believe it or not, there's a lot more that's caught than taught. And so I, I spend, I spend a lot of my time when I get ready in preparing to, to create graphics, to look at graphics, to look at what is, is on the market. Like I, I, I spend probably about, I'll be honest with you, probably about 60% of graphic design is research. And I know that sounds crazy because like I hate research, but it's fun research because I get to go and I get to look at all these different incredibly designed books and social media uh, artwork and motion graphics and Instagram accounts. And, and so I get to come away with some really, really good stuff. Um, and I get to be inspired by what's happening. Now there's all sorts of websites that are out there that help with this, like dribble.com. Dribble has I three Bs. Like dribble has it. three Bs. Yeah, that's great. Uh, there's also uh, Adobe stock is another, is another style of website that you could go and check out. Um, Adobe stock has, a, has, uh, thousands of contributing artists um with with millions and millions and millions of different templates and and designs and artwork and so on and so forth so uh those are two really good ones uh, i would say right off the bat um but i the i think it's just it's a lot of research to look at what's being done in the industry now and i think sometimes what we what we forget is it's not necessarily about what we think looks cool that's that's the, the hardest thing is is just because you think something looks cool doesn't mean that one it was well designed or two that it's a popular or good or well produced graphic there's a lot of graphics out there right now on the internet that are not well produced and are not good graphics and they may catch the eye of someone uh, they may catch the eye of someone but it doesn't mean that to the critical eye or the consumer's eye that they are good graphics can I show an example of that, Cody? Just what you're talking yeah, about here. Okay, so yeah, Cody, um, Cody, it works at Kyle's church. But so we always kind of Kyle always somehow gets brought up the writers chat, either talking about agenting or something. And um, he's my business partner in Serious Writer. So Cody and I have worked together the last year and a half since we started the company um, on graphics. And um, I've had to learn <laughs> that to trust what I didn't think was going to be like super amazing because it is. And Cody is right every single time. So. I want to show the Brave logo. It's, um, I don't know what kind of font or that's not font, what kind of art this is, but I was like, oh, it's not my favorite thing, but it is beautiful. What, Cody, what is this? Let me take a look. Okay, so, so um, what is, what is the, This kind of design. Okay, so this is just, this is a, this is what we'd call a geometric design. And so it's urban geometric. And so we're using, we're utilizing shapes um, to, to design a, uh, you know, a, a lion's head basically. And we're, everything that, everything kind of coincides, right? So when I think geometric, I don't think rustic. So that's why we put, we put an overlay with a cityscape background behind it because they're complementary images. Right, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that, and with the geometric shape, so on and so forth, right, and then put a mountain backdrop or a, a, a tree backdrop, like that. Those don't, those things don't, don't work well together unless I'm intentional about the way that I'm designing them and putting them together. And so, um, this was, this was one where we wanted to make sure that it kind of flowed together uh, in the shapes and everything that went with it match now and with this the even the font that we took i took a long time to pick out the font because i wanted to make sure that the font that we picked matched and and felt right with the given graphic and i think sometimes what happens is especially with fonts we don't always realize how big a deal fonts are and so uh we'll we'll just slap anything on there and that that can be dangerous <laughs> so because once again it's i'm keeping i'm keeping tabs on what's current in the market as well as what i like 
And there are some favorites as a designer. There's some things I like, you know, that are my style, my signature as an artist. But really overall, I'm I'm looking at what is what is the new what is the newest and most current designs and how do they how can I how can I take what they're doing and implement it in the way that I design. I love it. And yeah. with these two, like it's so clean, but if you notice what's big on my screen, the it looks like the color with the hashtag going to the E is like a gradient. It gets darker mm -hmm. as you go down. And I'm gonna stop the share here. Um, Cody also taught me something interesting. Because I'm, I don't use Photoshop, I use Canva, which I know a lot of um, authors do. He told me never to use the zero, 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 zero. Is that white or black? One, black. Uh, okay, yeah. Um, he said never to use that because it's too harsh when you're doing your design. Like you need to go like a dark charcoal or another color. So I've started doing that on my designs, Cody, and it's made a difference. And I mm -hmm. thought that was an amazing tip. So I just thought of that going through here. But um, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting how you really need to talk to someone who's current and knows what's happening because you're going to start seeing i think the geometric shapes you're going to start seeing them everywhere if you're not already and this was like last mm -hmm. year he's like we need to do this and i'm like well <laughs> <laughs> that's a trend, be aware. Mm -hmm. that's a trend to be aware of and all yeah. that does this is sites like dribble show you the most current is that what you're saying yeah dribble dribble is going dribble does a great job of taking what's most current and kind of helping you navigate it and and um okay. it, they organize it so there's there's rustic designs and then there's hand drawn and then there's so so you kind of get a you got to kind of get a picture of everything that dribble has to offer and and not just not just what dribble has to offer but also what um also what other designers are coming up with okay and and one thing one thing that's really that's really i think is great is designers designers unlike anything else Graphic designers don't always come up with everything themselves. They get to they get to piece together different things. You know, so if I, I see a geometric shape I like, I'll, I'll, I'll download it, pull it in, or I'll buy it, pull it in to what I'm doing because it enhances the design. And so, like, a lot of times what people will come to me and they'll ask, okay, well, what are you doing? Well, like, I, I tell them, as much as I'm a graphic designer, I'm also a graphic manipulator. Because everything that's out there, you know, it, if I see something that I really like, I know how to re reproduce it. And that's the difference between, you know, sometimes people don't realize how to reproduce those things. But if you get good at gradients and shading and overlays and inversions and posterizing and all these things, all these things that go together with Adobe Illustrator and, and um, you know, Adobe Illustrator, Adobe Cloud, all these, all these different um, all these different things like if you if you start to use those um you're you're going to start to see that your your designs start to come up to par with you know everything else that's out there okay. and um you know so i think i think that that's um i think that that's important okay so, so when i'm hearing as a writer and i think i'm going to be reflective of a lot of the people watching this on the replay or in the chat is that we can bring all the this element, the, this experience into our graphic designs that we put, we might create on Canva to promote a book or promote a story. I'm not going to design my book cover. You know, you kind of said that at first. No way. And so we've had a couple questions in the chat about where do we find a good book cover des uh, a designer? What do we need to know for that? What's a general cost range? What's a real yeah cost range yeah so, I think that's some good questions yeah absolutely so there's so there's two ways one one is if you're self-published uh, do your research okay look at somebody's portfolio ask them to see what they've done before right and then compare you always want to compare notes on on book covers and what they're designing because I'll be honest we had we had, we had somebody who we designed a cover for and uh, they returned it. They didn't, it, it just wasn't what they liked. And that was totally fine. Like we're okay with that. We'd rather somebody do research and say, Hey, you're really not getting what I'm going for and say, you know, I'm, I'm going to go somewhere else. than just take us because they like us. You know what I mean? Like that's really important. We we're, and we don't want that. We don't want somebody to just take, I, I don't want you to just come have me design a cover and then take it because you like me. I want 
to be able to give you the best possible product. And I want you to be able to find the best possible match because your book, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I talk, I teach the class, always judge a book by its cover because <laughs> everybody in the writing world wants to say, don't judge a book by its cover. Don't judge a book by its cover. But the problem is it doesn't matter how we as readers judge a book. It matters how the open market judges a book. And when people are walking in, in Barnes and Noble and, and looking at these shelves of these beautifully designed books, like you've got to make sure that yours is up to standard and on par with what, what else is out there where you're going to get lost in the mix. Mm -hmm. And like people get lost in the sauce all the time. I'm telling you they do. Like it just happens like because they, they, and they have this incredible, and I can't tell you how many times, and Bethany will tell you this too. Like there are so many times exceptional books that are just fantastically written and have great content sit on a shelf and don't sell more than 150 copies because their, their, their cover is terrible. I'll tell you, I'm actually in a design class with Tom Cody for grad school right now. The cover of the book is a nightmare. I got the book in the mail and I was like, I don't even want to take this class because obviously they don't know what they're talking about. I'll show it in the after party. I don't want to put it on screen. Um, I even went so far as to get in touch with my advisor and tell her I didn't want to take this class, but she wouldn't let me drop it because it's a core class. And it was all from the cover of the book. I was so like, this is old. <laughs> I don't want to learn from them, but the content was so good. And it's exactly that. Like you do judge a book by its cover. I was ready to drop a class over it. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I'll tell you, like I, I immediately, I was walking through, I was walking through Barnes and Noble and as a designer, I am, I'm always appreciative of good design. Right. But I also try to, I, I'm very intentional about staying um, non-biased when it comes to books because I'm, I'm constantly thinking like, okay, maybe I missed it. Maybe I didn't, maybe there's something abstract. I'm not understanding, you know, but as you walk through Barnes and Noble, there is book after book after book with just awful, terrible design. Mm -hmm. Now you always have the exceptions. Like, don't get me wrong. Like if you look at, at you know, CS Lewis's books before they got recovered, those covers weren't good, right? Like if you look at J.R.R. Tolkien, you know, you look at the Lord of the Rings, the original series, like, those are the exceptions because they are modern, they are classics. Yeah. And so, you know, but you're not a classic. Like, and I, you know, <laughs> I, I know that sounds really, really rude not to say yet. to people. No, not you're, yet. You're not. Yeah, exactly. And most, most people, most, most people don't realize like those things are going to happen posthumously. Like that's not going to be something that you see in your lifetime. So what you want to do is craft a book cover and a book design that works with the current aging this market ages faster than anything. And it, it, five years ago, it was completely different than it is now. Two years ago, it was completely different than it is now. And the way that people are viewing things and how much, because we're in a spirit and an age of creativity, people are creating at a rate faster than we've ever had them create. And so design is changing and morphing very quickly. And so like, I'll even, I'll even look back at designs I had six months ago. I'll be like, that's really not up to date. Like, that's not outdated. I'll be really honest. I haven't said this to Bethany, but I'll tell you this, like our journey conference, right? Like our journey logo that we made and I'll our journey conference. Let me grab it. Like when we designed that in November of last year, that was a good, solid, modern design. Like it felt good for the conference. It was current, but we got, we got into, we got into August of this year and it felt old. It did. It felt, it felt like it had been worn down and too used. And so within, within less than a year, a design that was current and modern and, and, and looked good, looked less good in comparison with the current market. And so like, that's something that we need to consider. And so that's, and here's, here's why this matters for book design. Because your book design is not going to change. And like, like we can change a conference, we can change a conference website, we can change a conference logo, like we can go and do these things because that happens, but your book cover is not going to change for the most part, unless you have a rewrite, but that could be three or four or five years down the road. <clears throat> so it's so important that you create a book cover that is transcendent of the current period that takes into account the research from last, like other designs and where design is going so that you meet in the middle. Does wow. that make sense? Yeah. And, go ahead. And going along with that, we, you know, with Platinum Literary Services, which is my other company, we 
do book covers with Cody sometimes looking at like what's going to be the best for leadership books and we go to Amazon look at the top 100 what's trending and what Cody has often said is you have to look at the thumbnail size of the book as well you can't just say okay this looks pretty in a normal size you have to look on your phone and then you also have to say if I shrink this down to a tiny size is someone going to be able to recognize it and actually see the cover so busy covers sometimes can work really well and sometimes they cannot depending on the design yeah well, Cody, you just put in the chat, we have seven seconds to capture a person's attention visually. That's, boy, that's almost scary, you know, to, yeah. I, so, you know, uh, it's yeah. crazy. It's crazy. Um, just in two, the early 2018, January to February, uh, Google posted the latest survey that they had on web statistics. And they stated that we have, they call it the goldfish rule. And we have seven seconds. Like if you can't make an impression on somebody in seven seconds, then they are going to leave your website and they're going to be done. Like if they can't clear, if they cannot clearly define what you're about, they're going to leave your website. And so, uh, and so designers are constantly, there's, there's two, there's two patterns. Okay. There's, there's the Z pattern and the F pattern. Okay. And so the way that this works is if I take a book cover, I'm going to show you this real quick. Right. Right. If I take a book cover, okay. I designed this book cover. Okay, if I take a book cover and I start here and I go here and I go down here and then I go across and I don't know what it's about yet, then I've failed, right? So, and the, the F is the same. It's, it's, you go across, you go down, you go through, right? So, but that, those are the two methods. That's how people's eye patterns naturally move in a Z pattern or an F pattern. And so if you can't capture them immediately within that Z or F, then you've lost them. And so all of our websites, like Serious Writer, Serious Writer Academy, our conference websites, they're all based off of that because we have about seven seconds when somebody comes to our website, when somebody sees our book, when somebody sees our designs, we have seven seconds to capture their attention and, and, and keep it. Wow. So, yeah. It's so crazy. Now that's something very practical. We could practice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. When, or like when I get a uh, draft back from a graphic designer that I'm working at, practice the Z method and see if it passes that is what you're telling us. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And, and that's, that's why it was really important. And I, I, I'll just, I'll use this as an example because I actually designed this. The foreword is by Jim Tressel. So that's, that's the former Ohio state coach that won them so many, you know, that matters to Ohio state fans, right? Then you go through the middle. It's the Buckeye Believer, and it says 40 Days of Devotionals for Ohio State Faithful. And then I have the head, the helmets, and they know who it's by. Like yeah. all of the information is covered in that Z pattern. And if it's not, then it's failed, right? And there's there's all sorts of people out there, okay, that they have these abstract titles, they have these abstract photos and 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 things that they're putting on their on their cover designs, and they're not capturing people. The other thing is, if you, that, the, what we're talking about is it's not just seven seconds to get them the information, it's to visually goad them into enjoying the information. That's the difference, okay? And that's why fonts matter so much. Like, every single font on here was picked intentionally. Like, none of them were not. Like, every single one of them. Like, and yes, there's one, two, three, four. There are five different fonts on this cover. Wow. And that's every, like, like it does seem like a lot, but they're all complimentary. And if you can tell, you can see, I'm showing you all this. Like, I could probably just pull it up. And <laughs> it. So, but like, I mean, like they're all, they're all visually connected. So you, uh, they're, yes, they're different fonts, but they're showing up in different ways. One of them is a sports style font that is the same style of font that they do numbers in, in the NFL on the back of their jerseys. Another one of them is broadcaster font, which is what they use when in, in sports stadiums on their, their jumbotrons. Another one is, is, is Bebos Octin, which is, is a font that they use, that they literally use in MLB stadiums to update the scores. And the last one, the last one is Fanfare, which is the, the, the font that they use at, at games when the games, like when they say like, let's make some noise. That's the font they use on those on those videos and so each one of those fonts was intentionally crafted and designed like and and picked to fit within the scheme of the book subconsciously 
So subconsciously, you're triggering all of these sports things people aren't even realizing. They wouldn't know where that came from, but they know like that it's a sports book. Exactly. Here's, here's, the, here's the profound truth about design, okay? People won't always know what they're looking at, but they'll know what they're not looking at. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, they won't always know what they're looking at, but they'll always know what they're not looking at. They'll because know if they're not. They'll, exactly. They'll sense and, that, won't they? Exactly. Like, and, and we see it all over the place. There are professional, there are, there are thousands and thousands of graphic designers in the world, probably millions, if we really got honest about it. Like, there are probably millions of people creating and graphically designing things right now. And each of them has a specific eye and a specific way of seeing things and interpreting things, right? And for us to say like, oh, we can do this ourselves, like, and we totally know, that's craziness because there are people out there who have, who have been hired by companies to make sure that their products look good on the shelves. There are people who are out there who have been hired to make sure that, that websites look excellent. And there are people literally now in the world who are social media gurus who are only at a company to create and produce content that goes on social media. Multiple yeah, people. Full-time job. Teams. Yeah. yeah. I want, saw an interview the other day and they asked this lady what she was doing and she says, well, I'm in charge of Twitter for the company. That was all she did. Just not even yep. just social media. It was that yep. her whole thing was to follow right. the Twitter, Twitter and get the message out on Twitter. Yeah. That's what it's she It's a different did. language on Twitter. Yeah, it is. It's a whole other different thing and she focused on that couple things is is that I do want to make it so it's on the recording. Mm -hmm. Dribble is spelled with three B's. Is that what that you were saying? Okay. Dribble. Yeah. So we want to be sure if you're watching the replay and you don't see the chat and you go to that website, it's dribble.com, but it's with three B's, not two, which is, I made that error too. I thought it was only two. So I, I'm glad, Bethany, that you caught that. And um, I'm glad Elaine went to it <laughs> and brought it to our attention that we... Yeah, you know, I, I put it wrong in the chat. So I wanted just people to be aware of that since that's a good resource and stuff. But, you know, you just made the comment, Cody, about hundreds of thousands of graphic artists out there. Ah, okay, here I am. I have a self-published book just about ready to go. At what point do I do, the, do this book cover? At what? How do I even start finding someone that matches, that <laughs> might do a book cover for me? How do I do that? Okay, so there, there are a lot of different sites that uh, have graphic designers available to them. There's tailor-made brands. They have graphic designers on site. There's PubZoo Creative. There's One, one Word Media. There's One Source. Like, there are all sorts of companies. The best, Google is great because you can, you, can, um, you can literally search graphic design companies on Google, and they, you, can, you can look. Now, I will tell you, one thing that is important, like if you go to their website and you can't easily figure out what their pricing structure is, back out. That's where they're overcharging. Like usually, usually, and I'll say this, usually cover designers are people who are already working for a publishing company. Like people who know how to typeset, how to set things in, they're typically already snatched up by, by um, you know, the bigger houses. Zondervan, uh, Crossway, you know, um, <clears throat> there, Thomas Nelson, those, those people have an in-house, in-house designers that they're used to working with. And so another thing that you could do is you could, most of those people, that is not enough income for them to support their life. And so what they need is to have supplemental. And so most of those people are contracted workers that, that have been picked by publishing companies to do to bid out those jobs. So if you call if you call publishing companies and you ask them for information on their on their designers, they will typically give it out to you because those designers have NDAs where they cannot work with the the clients who are currently in their repertoire, but they can work outside of the company. And so if it doesn't interfere with the company and it doesn't interfere with the the produce of the the production of the company, then they are allowed to do it on their own. Wow. It's just how it is. So yeah. Well, they asked about like 99 designs and uh, I've seen some time Fiverr or any of those. Yeah. I, well, let me, let me say this. I'll, I'll say this. And I hate to say it this way because I'm the biggest proponent of cheap, but um, <laughs> anytime it, it, here's okay. <laughs> you get what you pay for. Yep. Like, and, and so I think one thing is it, that I try to stress to people is not, 
to go spend a bunch of money, but to invest wisely. Like, I think there's a big difference between, hey, I'm going to go spend so much money on getting a cover done, you know, and I'm going to make sure that I spent, I'm going to spend, you know, $500 getting a book cover done. Well, the person who spent $500 getting that book cover done, like they may have been able to shop around and get it for cheaper, like 120, right? So, but that can be intimidating to people because like, I don't want to spend that kind of money on a book cover. Like I don't have that kind of money to sit around spend on a book cover, but shop around a little bit and know the investment you make, like it's worth it. And some, some, uh, some designers will work out that they don't need to be paid up front, that they want to be paid in a percentage of book sales. Now that's what that's typically what I structure. That's how I structure that up to a certain amount of money that I make a, a portion of the cut on the book sales because, and I, I typically, it's like 1% of book sales, like 1% of the overhead. So like that takes a long time to get to my cap space, but it's, it's, it's also important because I'm, I'm now this project that I've invested in as a designer it goes longer for me instead of just a one-time fee. Now, sometimes people will just say it's a one-time fee. This is the book design. Like, and I've done a lot of those as well, but you know, getting to the place where getting to the place where you can negotiate that and talk through that and talk face to face or, you know, Skype to Skype or zoom to zoom or whatever with your potential designer. That's really important too. Okay. Well, what type of questions would we expect that designer to ask us because that surprised me mm -hmm. the very first self-published book I did was all I just thought I'd have them design the book but no they had a whole list of questions yeah so absolutely I, I had to do a lot of homework I'm really <laughs> oh you know what Jean I'm so glad you asked that I'm gonna go on record right now okay can I, can I say this is no this, gonna, this is a super it's gonna blow your mind you ready I can't read your mind <gasps> Okay. I know that's such a shocker for people. Okay. I can't read your mind. So like as a designer, something that I need to know is I need a ballpark to go off of, right? Like if you ask me, if you ask me to design your book, right. And I've never read your book. I've never met you. I don't know what your book is about. I don't know what designs you like. Then I am I am, I'm just wandering around aimlessly in the dark, right? So the so one thing is be prepared to show your designer or to discuss with your designer, like what other things you, you like, or you see in the market that you want your book to look like. Like if there's comparable things in the market, like I don't, as a designer, I don't want to do a ton, a ton of research to figure out what other books are in your, your line of work. Like if you've got speculative fiction, I'm, I don't want to spend my time figuring out what other book cover designs look like in speculative fiction. I want you to provide that to me. And I'm going to tell you if, you, if you contact me and ask me to do a book, I'm just going to send you out to do this stuff anyways, right? <laughs> so it's, but if you have that stuff done, you know, like I know there's a couple people who I've done some work for recently and they have all this stuff finished. Like they're done, they're ready to go. Like, and that's what, that's when as a designer, I'm like, okay, they know what they want. They're ready to rock and roll. I just worked with a client, uh, about a month ago and, uh, she sent the most thought through and detailed proposal to me as a designer. I think I've ever seen. She knew exactly what she wanted. I didn't have to, I didn't have to go all over the place and try and figure it out. She had it all set and ready to go. And it made the process for both of us unbelievably smooth. Like what it was a pleasure of, working with her. What sort of elements did she include? Like, so as a writer, what should I be thinking about? So, so one thing is, one, I'll, I'll say this. With this, designers don't want you to tell them how to do their job either. Okay, like, because they, they, they are the ones that know what they're doing. Um, but they, they want you to give them a direction. So if, if I'm saying, give, you, give me a direction, I'm going to ask you to go find the, the three comparable titles to what your book design, what you want your book to look like. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> and so to be able to say, Hey, here's, here's three, three books that I really like the design of. Can you do something similar to one of these or an amalgam of all of these or so on and so forth? That's helpful. The other thing is we want to know 
we, we really want most, if they're a good graphic designer, they want to figure out what's going to, what's going to suit your tastes as well. And so to get some imagery to help them, to help them know what kind of imagery you like, what the book, if you can't tell what your book is about effectively, this, this is just a helpful thing. Anyways, if you can't effectively tell what tell somebody what your book is about in like 30 seconds, then you probably haven't thought through it well enough. Right. And that's, that's good for you to have as a pitch for your agents anyways, that you're going to and your publishing houses. But a graphic designer wants that too, because they can't, they can't read your mind and figure out what, what you want to have it look like and how you want it designed. Okay. So, colors. Should you suggest colors? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. This lady sent us uh, three specific colors with hex codes, which if you don't know what hex codes are, you're already behind the ball. So you got to figure out what hex codes are. All right, hex let's codes, talk about hex codes. Yeah, there is six digit hexadecimal code that uh, signifies what your color is exactly. And that's a, that hex code, you can literally take down to, to Home Depot or Lowe's or uh, Sherwin-Williams and they will put that in their system and be able to spit you out the exact color because they can color match. That's, that's how much they have on the system, yeah. And so they go from zero, it goes from zero, to nine and A to, to F. That's the, that's the, the hexadecimal system. Wow. So that's, that's how it goes. So an orange, I think there's some oranges that are like four, two F four C B like, and you know, like, so that's an orange or I might be wrong. If you check me, I don't know that for sure. But like, you know, those, that if you could start figuring out your, your hex codes um, for the color schemes that you like, that's really helpful. There are, all, I will tell you this, if you're looking for color schemes, there are all sorts of color schemes available online. All you have to do is Google like fall color palette or orange color palette or red color palette or blue color palette, teal color palette. Mm -hmm. And they will give you like what looks like paint swatches and you can figure out all the hexadecimal codes for all of those those colors. Wow. Dribble too. I mean, if you go to Dribble and put in one hex code that you know you like, it'll yeah. pull, it'll pull up all the designs that have the hex code and then you can see how they used complementary or contrasting shades in the design. And if you click on a design, it'll tell you all the hex codes that are in there. So if you're like, I really love the blue with that purple, you can figure out exactly what blue with Dribble for free, which I thought was great. And Rhonda brought up about colors that sometimes they look different in print, like on the front of a book as mm -hmm. compared to on the computer. And I thought that was a good comment on that. I don't know if you have very, something very to true. that. Mm -hmm. That's very true. So the, the go-to in print is CMYK. Yeah. So there are two different kinds of color schemes, CMYK and RGB. Now RGB just basically has less um, <clears throat> they have less colors to work with and those RGB is the style that the, the kinds of colors that people use on the internet. They don't use CMYK as much on the internet because it, it varies from computer to computer how that those algorithms are, are um, deciphered by your computer. But RGB is a standard format that they came up with like at 20 years ago, I think. So, uh, CMYK is much better for print. RGB is the stuff that you want for um, online. And you can really, you can, there's all, there's like converters online. You can say, you know, CMYK to RGB because they're different hex codes. And so, <clears throat> you know, if you say, this is the, this is the hex code for CMYK hashtag um, FF321 or what, whatever, you know, it'll spit out what the RGB is and you can use that on your website. So that is why the one graphic designer I worked with produced something for the Kindle version mm -hmm. and, and something different for my print version. Absolutely. So Absolutely. Based on those. I didn't realize that. Yep. Huh. And so that's why like, so for a Kindle version, I have to, I have to export all my artwork in RGB. So I have to set up, like I have to set up parameters and, and export presets to export my book covers and uh, my Kindle covers, you know, in RGB. Um, <clears throat> and yeah. Oh yeah. Ryan has put another, it, RGB is just red, green, blue. And then it's like cyan, magenta, yellow, you know. It's all so the they, printer colors you have to replace in your printer. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh yeah. They are the printer ink colors, aren't they? 
on the, the interesting. Yeah. Well, that's it. I did not know that at all. So I don't know what else you had on your list, Bethany. We've spent a lot on book covers. Yeah. Probably, <laughs> yeah. Did, you some, did you have another area you wanted to take us to? I think, um, well, this is up to Cody, but, um, uh, at writers conferences, I think a lot of people talk to you about logos and things, um, mm -hmm. for their websites and things you want to talk about, um, that, and if you want, I'll pull up plats cause I'm so proud of it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. If you want to pull up plat, that'd be great. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess, yeah, I mean, logos are a big, they're a big deal. I mean, we, we've talked, I think we've talked about that on writers chat before. I, I, I think a lot of times people don't think through it because we're personal. So we don't think like, that's why I talk about think like a business all the time. Like you just got to think more like a business, like at no business, no business would start without having some kind of logo, right? Some kind of emblem or branding. Well, like you should think the same, like as a professional writer, you are a business like, and so that's just how you got to think. So yeah, this is what we designed for platinum lit. I love it. Uh, Platlet. Yeah. Um, this was with the little, 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 um, the crown over yeah. the eye. Yeah. Yeah. Um, from a client perspective, working with Cody, what was great is he made, we didn't know what we wanted. We were the worst clients in the world. <laughs> so <laughs> he gave us a website to go to and pull some designs from that things that we liked and we found some similarities. But he, the beautiful thing about this design is that Cody like took it like five steps further than we ever expected. So this is one piece. But if you look at, I think it's a hexagon at the top with the PT that pulls out as a logo that can be used, um, like for a Facebook header or icon or square piece. And then we have the platinum literary services that he takes the design off of it. And so we have it just blank and stretched out. So like we can use the logo multiple ways. And then on the website, Cody just adds extra things like the background. We didn't know he was going to do that, like textured background on the back. And it's probably our favorite thing ever on the website. So like just kudos to Cody. And then the little crown above the eye. Yeah, was I like just, that. Um, it was the crown from our serious writer logo that we love so much, which tied in over here as well. So he just, it puts a lot of thought into what he's doing. That is great. And then a lot of people are saying it's classy. And that was the first oh, thing I thought of when you brought that up, how classy it was on, the, on that way. Thank you. Um, Ron just asked a question over there. It, it, um, Web designs often include, a, also, often include a graphic that fills the screen when you land. I've been told your message should start before anyone has to scroll. Why do you like the large images? That's a great question. And I'm really, I'm actually really glad that you asked that because I think your story starts with your logo. Like I, so I don't, I think it's, I think your story starts with what embodies in your, your company, your brand. And so I, I think when people don't do that, um, I think sometimes they, they miss out. Like if I, I'll be honest as millennials, the, the, there, what are, do you guys know this? Do you, what in generation Z and millennials, what are the top, the top two fastest growing social medias? Do you know what those are? Instagram. This is the quiz. I'm, I'm, I'm asking. There's two social medias that are growing faster than anything in the millennial and, and generation Z. Okay. Yeah. Melissa still got it. It's Instagram and Snapchat and they are not tech space. Mm -mm. Right. And so the market, this is where the market has shifted the most. If you have a block of text on the beginning of your site, nobody's going to read it. They're going to, they're going to immediately go to something else. And I would love to tell you that, that, oh, you're going to get people that love it and they're going to read it and the content's so great. But if they, they're not going to be able to get past it because to them, that's like the molasses swamp that they have to wade through to get to the candy palace and they're not going to do it. Right. Block text just immediate, immediately stops people. All right. And so that's why we start ours off with with a, a graphic i'm going to show you we're 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 revamping the I, is it okay if i share screen real quick we're revamping the um pub zoo site right now and so i want i want you to see our our home page because i think it's important um bethany says candy palace where is that that is uh after the gumdrop forest 
<laughs> so this is like so this is PubZoo's site, and we're we're re we're reestablishing our web presence, and so we're kind of updating. But even this is not our website. Like this is not our our. If you can see this, the graphic design with a purpose, that is not our logo. That's just a badge, an image placer to show people what's going on. But if you click on the home page and it reloads, you can kind of see the animation and how it comes in. Like right immediately when you go to our site, we want it to be impossible not to be able to figure out where everything is. Yeah. And so that's really important to us. So, you know, when, when you see, all of the things that we're doing, uh, we want it to be incredibly simple because as much as telling a story matters, you can tell a story without using words. Like, I, and I know that that might seem counterintuitive to writers, but like, that's the truth. And I think sometimes we get, we, we wanna, we wanna tell our story so badly with words that we forget that images are, are how a, a photographer tells a story, right? Yeah. And, and so I, I would almost say that it's, um, I, I, think, I think it's just, it's very important to understand that the market shifting is nobody's fault, but it doesn't mean that we don't have to do something to fix, to, to fix ourselves and make ourselves appealing to that market. Does that make sense? It does. It does. What other trends are you seeing coming as if as we try to train our eyes to, you know, I could sit there and send you things that I like, but it doesn't sound like I may be the, I, you know, I'm I'm not even, I'm multiple generations ahead of you on yeah. that. So I and I know we have to know our audience, and I know oh, you yeah, know sure. and all that. I so where what other trends are you seeing right now that we might be aware of? Well, I mean, I think, I think the trend that is the scariest for writers is the trend that, that print media is, is slowly dying. Like it's, it's, it's dying a really slow death. But with that, we just have to understand like things are going to shift and change. And so we may get to a point, I don't know if we'll ever get to a point where we're done with physical copies of books. I just don't. I think there are just too many people, even, even I like having a, the physical hard copy of a book, but I think sales are going to begin to teeter totter more, way more towards online sales, audiobooks, and books on tape, like, you know, like a recorded MP3 than anything else. Uh, the other trend I think is, um, I, I have seen this more and more, but the other trend that you might want to consider as a, as a writer, I know this is way out of left field and it has very little to do with uh, graphic design, but um, is Spotify. If you're not on Spotify and you're not, you're not seeing what Spotify is doing, they're about to, they're about to rock the world because they're now offering all, they're offering the podcasts uh, that, we're only exclusive to iTunes podcasts and because Spotify has a bigger market, like they're, they're exceeding. And so podcast listeners are going to Spotify to listen to Spotify premium and to get their podcasts. And, uh, it's just, it's a, it's a good method because it's a monthly subscription versus having to pay for content and so on and so forth, even though podcasts are pretty much free, but Spotify is Spotify is, on the up and up and they're they're really going there so the other thing is we really got to start thinking through stories instagram and snapchat stories mm -hmm. um, Yay. <laughs> i i keep telling people this and the the biggest struggle that people have and i'll be really honest is that they don't translate into more platform but what they do translate into is stronger platform. Oh, I and I think the problem that people are, that we're struggling with right now is that we're, we're talking platform, 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 platform. But at the end of the day, if you've built your platform on uh, 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 twigs, it's going to come crumbling down when anybody tries to, you know, when anybody questions it. And so what stories let us do is continue to firm up 
what people know about us. Like I, millennials, that's their, that's how they get news. I'm just telling you, like I get all of my news on Instagram. Like I do, I know you might, as somebody, as an older person, I had an older person tell me that, like, that's crazy. How could you do that? Well, like, because they're always links in their bio and they have video and it's easy for me to figure out what they're going after. And honestly, we have the laziest market we've ever had and they don't want to work for it. <laughs> I get my news so, from Twitter, to yeah. be honest. What's yeah. trending? What oh, are yeah. Twitter, like, Twitter oh. breaking news, yeah. Something if, happened I use, if I use Twitter, if I use Twitter, I would go there for my news. I'm sure. Yeah. I just don't use Twitter. Like that's like, you know, I'm, I'm not 30 yet. Like, and I know a lot of my friends don't even use Twitter. So it's just, it really is. I mean, some of that's preference I, for me. It's preference because everything I do is image based and that's just not the social media. That's the best market for that. So that yeah. makes sense. Any idea, Jan asked about children's books or books on quilting? Any idea like that as a graphic designer, what you would suggest for her to look at? Well, um, I would I would say that you need to get a good photographer and get some great pictures of your quilts because quilts make a great background. Mm -hmm. Like, in fact, you know what? Why don't we do, – I don't know if this would be helpful or not, but why don't um, – would it be helpful if I showed you the process of creating a graphic? Yeah. Would that yeah, be helpful? Is that something five, we can do? We've got about five minutes. So well, I, I can do it in five minutes. Let's do that. Five minutes, I think that'd be great. Okay. Let me let me take a look at this, right? So please, please everybody say it in the chat. Yeah, five minute graphic. <laughs> okay. Five minute graphic. I can't promise you that it's gonna be a great graphic, but it's because it's gonna be a five minute graphic. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna share. I'm gonna share my screen here in just a second. Oh, I gotta find something to start with. <laughs> um, so normally I would do more to um, more to this, but I'm gonna share my screen real quick. I think I had another question too, like earlier. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Okay. So okay. I'm gonna create my graphic. Um, Cody, I had a real quick question. Rhonda asked earlier, do you buy stock graphics or do you create your own? Um, I do a mix of both. It just depends on what the job requires, to be honest with you. Sometimes I'll buy uh, packs of graphics uh, because it gives me the elements that I need to work through things. Um, sometimes I will, sometimes I will, um, pre-purchase. I mean, you, the, the thing about it is like, you're going to have to at some point purchase, um, fonts. So those are, those are kind of along the same lines, like purchasing fonts. But I try, I try whenever I can to, if I, if I'm working on a project that is for someone and it has to be very individual, I, I almost never use uh, like stock graphics. I, al I always try and create my own. But if I'm working on social media campaigns, I will, I will look at some pre-made templates and alter the graphics and switch them and change color schemes to make it a little bit easier. Okay, so here is, Here's a, here's, can y'all see this? Yes. Can y'all see what I'm doing? Okay, so here's, here's just a basic picture of a quilt, right? And so I picked one that was pretty uh, neutral as far as the color scheme uh, is concerned. And so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to create a line because lines are very, uh, very easy to utilize in graphic design and they're essential. Okay, so here's my line, and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put graphic, I'm gonna put, uh, we'll call it the Quilted North. Like Quilted Northern? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna look at some fonts. Now I have thousands of fonts. This yeah. is not even out of A yet, so. <laughs> uh, so 
I look, I'm just going to pick this. This is not my favorite, but for the sake of time, we're going to do this the way that we're doing it. Now, this is in Photoshop. Yes, it is. This is in Photoshop. So I'm going to match the color to the bar. I'm going to make the color a little bit bigger. Maybe even bigger than that. Ooh. Okay, so what you want to do is I would never stop with just these two fonts. I would find something that is thin. If you, if you do a, a curly Q font like that, you always want something that's thin uh, that is a good complement to what else you're doing. So I picked this one. I go here. Realize that they're not as proportionate as I'd like them to be. So I go in here and I quilted north. Now you see how it's kind of offset and how it feels like there's more up in the top space than the bottom space. I'm going to fix that real quick and I'm going to center all of them. Because <laughs> here's the deal it doesn't matter where the rectangle is, it matters where it all feels like it is, right? Here, I'm going to pick one final font. And we'll go, I'll capture that just for fun. So there it is. That's a quote to North. Now, what I can do is I can take the background right here and I can decide to put a little bit of haze on it. I can change. Um, the hue, the saturation, I can go, I can make it more vibrant. I can change the saturation so it looks like it's a little bit heavier. Yeah. I can invert it. That's always fun. Um, I can add a gradient. That gradients are, are big um, in design. So I'm going to choose to do that. Like so there, it. I have a graphic. It is included. It has a quilt in it. It has the word, the quilted north. And I would post that on social media right now. Like, that's, that's how simple it is. So, like, I know, I know you're like, oh, that's super simple. I'm sure that's super simple. But this is the process. Like, it's just getting what to the heart of what you're doing and making it visually appealing. Like, if if I if you saw this right away, what would you think? Well, what would your first impression be? Warmth. Yeah. Warm and and um, pull up around me. I love the gradient. That really added something to it too. Mm -hmm. That's my favorite thing is the filters he puts over the top of the photos. Like, well, I'll make a photo in Canva and I'll be like, Cody, it doesn't look good. <laughs> I'll take it and put some magic filter on it. And it's amazing. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Well, let's invite everybody back in. We just got a minute or two here left. If anybody wants to come on back in and as it, ask any other questions, Cody, this has been great today. It's given me ideas and background I've never had before oh, good. On, on, on that. And uh, I, I like the idea of working on developing my eye better. Mm -hmm. on that. So we'll ask if anybody has any questions and like what we normally say, if you can't get back in, Put it in the chat because sometimes we've blocked you and sometimes we have to invite you to come on back in so if you can't get back in just put it in um i got you mary did you get mary yes okay so if anybody else let us know does anybody have in the couple minutes we have left a question you want to ask cody while we're still on the recording cody i'll ask a question real quick um i have photoshop and i love photoshop and i've used it for years but a lot of people can't afford Photoshop because mm -hmm. it's now that it comes with a subscription. Is there a free or inexpensive graphics program you think people could use to create graphics? There, no. <laughs> I, I would love to, I would listen, here's the deal. I'll tell you this. I think Canva's great. I think there's, there's PicMonkey. There's all sorts of things online. 
the fatal flaw they all have is the editability. Um, and and I do, do I think that everybody needs to go and get Photoshop? No, I don't think that. I don't think that every author needs to go get Photoshop. But what I do think is knowing what professional people do in Photoshop, because that is that is the design standard. There's there is no graphic designer right now that is not using Illust Adobe Illustrator or Adobe Photoshop or Adobe InDesign or Dreamweaver in their uh, design working, right? And so being able to see what somebody does in a professional program hopefully can help you kind of reverse engineer it for Canva or, or you know, PicMonkey or one of, these, one of these other sites that allows you, uh, you know, to, to utilize those things. The other thing is on your phone, which is where, I'll be honest, a lot of people are doing their graphic design right now. <laughs> like, I know that sounds crazy, but there's Photoshop Express, and that's completely free. And you don't need an ex a subscription or anything. So once you've taken a picture, you can add layers, you can add filters, you can add all sorts of things to it. And uh, it, it will end up looking like a professional photo on your phone. Like that's how, and it, and it, and it presets your photos so that if you're using, uh, and it's pre, pre templates that you can use uh, as far as, you know, square or four by three or story size. So, I mean, Photoshop Express is, is great. So, so yeah, I, I, that would be the other one I'd say. But as far as like on your computer, there's, there's not, there's not one that I would necessarily recommend. I mean, Canva, Canva is, is great if you don't have Photoshop. Okay. So that's, I mean, that's kind of where that goes. Yeah. That makes sense. I think Bethany asked about Photoshop ele elements. Is that yeah, one? what are your thoughts on that one? Um, it's not bad. I mean, if it's, listen, I'll be honest with you. If it's Adobe, it's a good program. They've got some of the, they've the best designers in the world creating these programs and figuring out how to make the design process easier for designers. So I, I think that would be good. Yeah. Is it safe to say that elements is, um, it's a smaller version of Photoshop. So if you're not doing it as a graphic yeah. designer, it would be a program where you could go and do some basic stuff with that program. Okay. That's my husband set that one up for me. And that's probably why. <laughs> so yeah. I'm yeah. No, it's, I, I think it's great. I mean, Photoshop, Photoshop is, that's where I just did that graphic. Normally I would start in illustrator and I'd get my elements and I'd export them to Photoshop because illustrators is really where, everything comes together so like and then i would go i would go into photoshop and and work from there you know but, but yeah but this has been great today thank you thank you for spending time with us cody no problem. On that and we'll invite everybody to stay for the after party for a few minutes too but i just really want to quick to, as we wrap up thank cody and thank bethany for being here today and uh announce next week you know just as we've had two characters today out of these two people <laughs> Next week, and Melissa and Johnny, I think, are going to lead us on next week. It's a, a discussion of a book on characters. So we've had the example today, and then we'll learn all about how to develop characters. Melissa, do you have anything you want to add to next week? The, what, who wrote the book? Uh, Brandilyn? Brand yes, it's Brandilyn Collins' book, Getting Into Character. Getting yeah. in character. So if you've got that book, you might want to pull it off your shelf and uh, review it for next week. We'll take, take, we wanted to at least bring something to writers chat that kind of focused a little bit more for the fiction writers too. Mm -hmm. So we, we've been trying to do that. So uh, as our ongoing book discussion, anything else, Bethany, for the good um, we'll go off recording? Yeah, two things. Cody will be at the Ohio Christian Writers Conference. Um, for those of you going or thinking of going. And then also on the record, Cody, if somebody wants to hire you or talk to you, what is the process and what's the best way to jump to the top of the line in your waiting list? Yeah, so if, you go to, <laughs> yeah. Um, if you go to realpubzoo.com slash contact, um, you, uh, you can actually sign up to have us do something for you. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to copy that into the... I got it. Realpubzoo.com. Realpubzoo.com. Yep, there it is. And if so, if you go there, if you fill out that contact form, the rest of our site is currently under maintenance. So we are we're kind of overhauling our website and getting everything going. So 
please do not judge our ability to design websites based on our current our website. <laughs> always like work in progress. Website. It's but always we're, work yeah. Progress. We're we're rolling out some new things. So um, so yeah. But if you if you go there and fill out the contact form, um, that'll let us uh, that'll let us know what you want, and that gets sent to my assistant Angela. Angela James is fantastic. So she she would be the intake person that would be working with you personally. And then from there, we delve it out to our designers, and all of our designers have been vetted by me. So they all are <laughs> up, to my, up to my level and my understanding of my, my um, level of graphic design. So um, they don't, they, nothing goes out without my stamp of approval. So, um, so you guys know. So it may not be me personally working on your stuff, but it will be somebody who is excellent. Sounds so. great. Well, this has been great today. It's really, as writers, gave us a uh, really a new perspective. I think of what we need to look at at book covers and how we can get better at it, and uh, where do we need to go get some help on this. So yeah. I certainly have appreciated it. Thank you so much, Cody and Bethany. Thank you so much, and uh, we look forward to you guys joining us next week. And thank you for watching the replay if you had today, and thank you for being with us today, everybody. And we'll see you next week for the next Writers Chat on Tuesday, 11 o'clock Eastern. See you then. Bye now.